This is my disability theology. This is about all of the people we will cross paths with as SLPs and as Christ followers. We will be with parents who just found out their child's diagnosis. We may help someone at the end of their life eat foods that remind them of fall when their children were still small and life was more smiles and giggles. We will open our doors to people who come in on wheelchairs. We will comfort families. We will be our patient's voice. We will hold their hands and help them through. We will do this because we believe in a better tomorrow. We will do this because we believe in a God who promises eternal life. We do this to spread his kingdom. We do this all through him, our Father. We are his children whom he calls by name. We say, Abba, we belong to you. Our flesh may fail, but my God, you never will. This is my life, our life, our theology shaping with every piece of knowledge we receive, every bit of new information we absorb, Swinton and his focus on friendships and that we should demonstrate acceptance and grace for all people because that mirrors how Jesus offered his friendship. Veneer and his expression of being inclusive of people with disabilities, serving with them horizontally and not over them vertically. Kierkegaard and his belief that neither physical nor mental disabilities should limit one from living their best, most authentic life, and that we truly become ourselves through Jesus Christ. Hauerwas and his revealing that autonomy is an illusion and we ought to be fully dependent on Christ, the true author of our stories. I have gained new insight to my old. I once stared at people with disability. I once laughed at the person who was different than I. I once pitied someone and called them sufferers without realizing I too suffer without realizing I too have disabilities, without realizing I have support where they don't, and it's not by my own doing, but because of our social construct. I can easily walk and move around because I know the ground will support me, but they are dependent not on the ground, but on the one who says, for I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not, I am the one who helps you. And I understand that socially I may have it easier, but spiritually they do. I'm dependent on the tangible to get me through everyday life, where they are dependent solely on him and his provision for how they live life each day. We all get anxious and stressed in situations we can't control. But Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And this verse that is for them is also for me, for us. What they need to get through life, we need to. This verse points us to rely on God's resources and promises, knowing that the Lord acts purposely and without failure. The main passage that has shaped my disability theology is Psalms 139. The commentary of this passage discusses how God is in control of our time here on earth and that he knows all of us and is forever present with us. We, as the body of Christ, must live with each other, side by side, growing and learning together, not apart. We have a future, we have hope, we have each other. We are his and his alone. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. I see perfection in him. I see my faults and the sins of the world, and so I better see that people with disabilities who are just as much a part of this world as I am, but even more, I see them not in the world, but who they are in God. Where there is God, there is perfection. I choose to see perfection. I choose to presume competence. I choose to be in a union, for we are whole together and broken when apart. So instead of judging, I pray to remain open. Instead of staring, I pray to look to the heavens. Instead of laughing at, I pray I'm in friendship with and laughing together. Instead of pitying, I pray I use discernment and receive feedback humbly. And most importantly, 
instead of sitting and waiting. I pray that I may be the one to advocate and be the voice for people with disabilities. We are in this together, by grace, through faith. We are in this world together. As an SLP, I will keep striving to find where my patient excels and support them in any way I can. I would teach them, but not without knowing and applying their enthusiasms and interest. I would treat the whole person and not just my ideas of who they are. And lastly, I would give myself grace, for I will never be a perfect clinician.